You all sound so remarkably prepared for the world of, of you know, both very long, low rates and you've thought about where the world might be going. I wanted to end by asking each of you um, to reflect on one thing, one area, whether it's an asset class or whether it's a risk that you suspect your colleagues may not have reflected on enough that could be a surprise. It's something that you feel the industry ought to be thinking about. Because I think sometimes in these conversations we all, you know, we all agree, and it's quite useful to end with, what, what would be your wake up call? You, wasn't it um, the former defense secretary who said, you know, the known unknown? Uh, you know, what is it that worries you, or what is it that you think is an opportunity that people have not focused on enough? And this is, I, they didn't know this question was coming, so I, I, uh, <laughs> I have put you somewhat on the spot, but Mark, let's start with you. All right, well, uh, you know, I think it, 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 it always gets to, uh, you know, particularly late in the cycle, um, stretching beyond what you think, what, not what you think, but what you're actually good at. So, well, you know, I can't, I can't meet my bogeys, particularly if you have fixed bogeys and what your returns have to be. Just, you know, nothing necessarily specific on an asset class, but just doing things that you're not necessarily that good at in order to, you know, well, I know I can't do with what I'm good at, so I'm going to try something else. And you know we've we've seen that in the past. You know when we went into uh, the last recession, obviously subprime was a big deal. CDOs were a big deal. Highly complex. I think Ron mentioned um, the idea that correlation will bail you out, and that was one of the real killers um, in CDOs. Is that there was a lot of you know a, a lot of uh, assumptions about getting geographic correlation benefits and that sort of thing. So I'm not sure what it's going to be next time, but I I think you know the latest new thing that's adding some juice tends to. Um, tends to bite you. Ron, what's your... So I alluded to this before, but I want to touch on it a little bit more. So I, I'm always thinking about the next shock. And I, I believe that we're conservatively run so that when there is the next shock, we'll be able to take opportunity. It'll be opportunistic and be able to uh, invest when that shock happens and not be afraid to do that because we have the capital to do it. I say that, but sometimes, since you're asking about the known unknown, I go back to this point of the low rate environment. Now, I believe in that shock environment that we will have uh, spreads significantly wider, and that will help. Uh, but will the industry, not so much our company now, but will the industry have the ability to take advantage of that shock when it happens? In, in other words, is there enough capital in the industry to support taking advantage of a downturn, right, without necessarily having the higher rates to bail them out. That's the thing that I don't think anybody's really thinking about, uh, and I, it concerns me for our industry. Thank you. And Scott, the last word is yours. Yeah. Before I get to it, just to respond to Ron's <laughs> bit, which I totally agree with. I think one of the huge lessons of the financial crisis was you need to have risk budget. You know, if you went into the financial crisis and you were, had used up all your risk budget, Financial crisis hit, things got riskier, you had to sell at absolutely the worst time. And right. I, being here 30 years, I have been through a number of cycles, and in the early 2000s, that was the case at John Hancock, extremely painful. In the financial crisis, we, we had risk budget at that time, and so 09 was like one of the best investing years of my life. And so it is a big lesson. You, you want to have risk budget for when things get cheap and you can take advantage of it, and you don't have to be a seller. But I guess, um, the risk I actually worry about, despite that I'm always pounding on the table that we have to be prepared for low rates, is a rising rate environment. And in what ways could it hit you that you don't expect? You know, I worry about what it does do to governments who have these massive, de massive debt holdings, and as rates go up, how are they going to service that? But a, a sort of more narrow point as an insurance industry is we tend to have massive derivative portfolios that are largely lengthening our book. And as rates go up, those positions fall in value, which is fine because our liabilities fall in value as well. But with the movement of Dodd-Frank to clearing these derivatives, we are now in a position where we have to come up with cash for that drop in value. And so if you shock your derivatives portfolio with a 500 basis point rise in rates, our, our book, we have to come up with like $15 billion of cash. And where are we going to come up with that cash? That is something I'm very focused on. I don't have well, those, I think, are three um, very thoughtful and important concerns to end on. So thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.